on today, we're going to look at this right here. Just not a sermon, but just a thought. Um, <coughs> say that because what we're going to look at today is a sermon. Mm -hmm. And uh, this particular sermon in which we're going to look at, uh, we're going to see how, it, how we measure up to what the sermon says. Uh, so, uh, entitled, Judge Not, and it's Matthew chapter number 7, uh, verses 1 through 12. Uh, interesting how I got 71 there, huh? <laughs> but uh, Matthew chapter number 7, uh, verses 1 through 12. Here in this particular uh, text, we see Matthew here writing this, this particular gospel. It's not necessarily in chronological order, but it comes to a point where as Jesus begins to, to end his Sermon on the Mount, and once again, this is a sermon in which we are taking a look at today as Jesus uh, spoke here. Once again, Matthew chapter number 7, verses 1 through 12. And if you can recall throughout the book of Matthew, it starts off in regards to Jesus and who he is and, and how he had came. The Virgin Mary, 42 in generation, 40 and two generations, and through this uh, virgin by the name of Mary, he was conceived by the Holy Ghost, and, and then... Uh, Folk try to kill Jesus. He was a baby. And um, God, amen, warned Joseph and, uh, of different things. And, and Jesus was able to come out of all of that unscathed. And then um, we see later on, and we see that John the Baptist comes on the scene. As John the Baptist comes on the scene, Jesus is baptized. Uh, and God confirms who Jesus is, the Son of, the son of God. And afterwards, the Bible lets us know uh, that uh, the Holy Ghost uh, had, uh, in chapter number 4 of Matthew, says uh, Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And through this temptation, uh, the devil tempted, tempted him and Jesus responded with the word of God. And it just shares with us and shows us that when the devil tempts us, uh, we must respond to him by the word of God. Amen. Not how strong we are, not how intellectual we are, none of that stuff, but with the word of God. Amen. And as uh, Jesus went on, he began to uh, sit down and uh, went up into a mountain, began to, to speak to uh, the disciples, and this is where the Sermon on the Mount, uh, on the Mount, just goes on and talks about different subjects. Subjects there, the Beatitudes, and and telling them they're the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Uh, start beginning to talk about uh, the law and, and anger, and uh, teaching on adultery, on divorce, on oaths, on uh, love for enemies. Uh, uh, chapter six began to talk about almsgiving and about prayer, and then about fasting. Uh, then he began to talk about the treasures in heaven, uh, light of the body, trusting one master. And, and then he comes all the way down uh, here in chapter number seven after you get to speaking of all of those things. And, and he starts out in verse number one and says, judge not. He puts a, uh, there's a comma there rather. And it says that ye be not judged. And then two says, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Uh -huh. Now I must admit I, I've had my prejudices and my judgments <laughs> didn't necessarily balance out the way in which the Word of God uh, says. So I must apologize and come before God's people and, and just lay it out because of the fact that We've got to understand that, that when it comes to judgment, when it comes to, to this true justice and everything, it's, in actuality, it's God Amen. who uh, administers that 
And when it is done, it's done appropriately. And it's measured right. Uh, but when we do it, when we do it, we have a tendency, mothers, to really louse it up. You know, I've had my thing about, you know, men with earrings. Don't you know, only, you know, women aren't the only ones that wear earrings, right? And men wearing dresses, you know, and tattoos and things like that. And, and, and you know, and I, I had to get knocked off my high horse with that. Because it's still, you know, dresses ain't it, okay? That's not it. No matter how much you think of Tyler Perry, men in dresses ain't it. Uh, but the thing is, is that you've got to really come right back to the Word of God. And it's sad to say how we're talking about the people of God, and, and we say we've got to come back to the Word of God. When did we ever leave the Word of God? When we allowed our prejudices, when we allowed all of our thinking, all of our traditions, all of our experiences to, to mix in with, with what God's Word is. Certainly there are, there, are, there are avenues or there are ways and there are times when we use those in other things, you see. But when it comes to God's Word, it stands alone. That should come, amen, uh, uh, number one to anything and everything. So here Jesus says, for, what, for with what judgment or condemnation ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure you, you meet or use, it shall be measured to you again. Um, and let me just read this and we'll go back if necessary. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Uh, um, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is in thine own eye? <laughs> I, I, as I was reading that and, and you know, it caught my attention, I, I said, whoa, this is like uh, a little bit much for me right now. Let me stop for a minute and let it soak in, sort of. And, and I, I like, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye? Yeah, that's why I like the, how this rendering is. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank? in your own eye. Oh, yeah. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? And when all the time there's a plank in your own eye. I better use this some, uh, uh, so I can keep the audio going here. Uh, so really when you look at that, when you think about a speck of sawdust, I know it hurts when we get sawdust in our digging bar. Yeah. <laughs> we help build something together, and thank you, brother, at, at the back porch. And, 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 and that, that sawdust get in our eye and everything after sawing, uh, more likely because we didn't have a proper, or I didn't have proper uh, uh, eyeglasses on. And, and it, and it was really, took a whole lot for it to get out. Uh, but never did Deacon Bob say, why do you have that sawdust in your eye? <laughs> But I, I, I had found this right here. Look, dude, I think I got something in my eye. Hey, don't worry. I'll help you get it out. So what it is, dude got a little sawdust in his eye. But the other guy said, let me help you get it out. Y'all see what it's in his eye? A plank. I mean, uh, when, we, when we're looking at this, and then I say, well, what, what is a, a plank? I really had to look these things up, y'all. I really did because, you know, you can think of sawdust and you think of, 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 the, of the plank and everything, but when you look at the speck with the sawdust, you can see that it's just those little particles after sawing and different things like that that can really go anywhere and everywhere. Even wind can just blow, can blow those things, uh, you know, around. Uh, and, and, and it caught my attention more specifically because as I cut the grass on yesterday at home and that thing wore me out too. Wore me out. And uh, I come running in the house, sat down, got two things of water, and sat down 
drinking. I was still sweating. I, I'm like saying, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And then I got to plead, uh, you know, saying, Jesus, help me. <laughs> you, know, you know how you feel like you're going to die? <laughs> you know, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> you know, all these things. Are, uh, and and uh, that, that son really, really got me yesterday. And, and as I was reading it, and, and look, it says that this speck right here or this sawdust, a little piece can get in your eye and really affect your whole vision. Uh, you have really problems of seeing and, and you really can't conduct business or do something unless that, that, that speck or that sawdust gets out of, your, out of your eye. And then if that's in there, someone comes and, and sees there's a plank. And I had found out that a plank was a rafter. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the rafter, a rafter is something whenever, if you look in your attic and you see what holds up the roof. A rafter. And something that this, this is huge, of course, you know, this is all, all you know, figurative and everything when it comes to, to this. But we can see what he's talking about here. Why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the beam is into thine own eye? You see how easy we can really get into some judgments? How we really get into condemnation? How we really can get into things without really uh, uh, seeing that, that plank or that beam that's in our own eye? But Jesus goes on in verse number 5 and says, Thou hypocrite. And that's what we are whenever we, we think that someone else is wrong and you're right. He says, you hypocrite. Uh, the pretender. He says, and then shalt thou see. He says, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. So he's saying it's something that we have to do. If we say that we have no sin, then... The word is not in us. Basically, we are a liar. If we say we have no sin. He said, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. He said, first get your act together. You know, it's easy to really to point the finger. It's easy to really say what should be and what should not be. Yes. It's easy to, to line up all the, all the things in which, we, in which we're supposed to do. Touch not, taste not, handle not. All of those things. Uh -huh. But yet we can't even handle it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Jesus even talked about the Pharisees in regarding all of that. Saying he's going around and, and making sure that folk do this and folk do that. Matter of fact, he said he'll travel a long way just to get one convert and turn him into, you know, a child of hell. But here Jesus says, look, get it right. So some people can pinpoint everything wrong yes. you do. Yes. And, and some people can pinpoint everything. Now, when I say everything, that is inclusive of what? Everything. Everything that you do. That sounds so familiar to a Pharisee. And then he says, but when it comes to correcting themselves, guess what? The pen doesn't work. It ran out of ink. When it comes to correcting ourselves, when it comes to really taking this word of God and applying it to ourselves, and, and now you know we can see it with everybody else. Uh -huh. You know the Sunday school lessons that we come up with, 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 with which we study and everything, and, and we say, oh, this would be good for such and such. Even a sermon, or we say, this would be good for such and such. When in all actuality, whatever, amen, we find ourselves getting into, it's good for us. As a matter of fact, it's like medicine. It is medicine. Amen. 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 Don't you know medicine doesn't always taste sweet? But it's good for you. I've heard people talk about that castor oil. 
I can only imagine it doesn't taste good. I used to cry for bare aspirin, you know, the child one. The kind that was sweet when I was a big kid. <laughs> but little did I knew my mother was going to pray for me, uh, you know, instead of giving me this aspirin. And I said, oh boy, we're going to go into prayer meeting now. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> uh, and I, maybe that's what we ought to be doing. And when folk have a headache, when folk have this or that, that's going to prayer. That's have a prayer meeting right here. And we ain't going to stop until what? It's gone, <laughs> you know? And that's when we begin to speak it <laughs> into existence. I'm healed now. Amen. But it goes on. It says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, turn again, and rend you or tear you. So here Jesus began to speak of judge not. But now he comes to this particular point where he says, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pearls before swine. Now what does that have to do with when you talk of judgment? We really look at it and see it. I was reading here and begin to talk about how Dogs and swine was something that was that was pretty um, bad uh, that the Jews looked at, and then we see here it give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Well, what's holy about this judgment? Well, I can only say how we judge. It's not saying that you're not going to judge or you don't judge, but he's saying is that if you're going to do it then you do it with the same, or what same thing you're going to be judged with. And that has got to be the word of God. Amen. So judge not on our own because we have issues ourselves. Yeah. But if we're going to judge, then do it according to the word of God. Amen. Absent or take ourselves out of this whole equation uh, other than being the tool that God will use. So Talking about the dogs and the swine refer to those who have deliberately rejected the message of truth. These particular animals were especially repulsive to Jesus' audience. So if you're going to have the truth, then, then make sure it's the truth. And, and it's not mixed with any of our, uh, of, I, was, I was using the word prejudices or, or our thoughts about it. You know, what, what we think what we think should happen and, and all these type of things. Jesus didn't even do it to the woman that was, that was caught in adultery, right? That's right? I mean, how was Jesus going to turn around and judge a woman that was caught in adultery but not judge the man that was in adultery with her? Because it took two to tangle. So, you know, but the people that were ready to stone her, they realized and understood that, that they had a plank in their own eye. And they had to understand that and realize it and accept that. So give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and, and turn again and, and tear you up. Oh, yeah. But here he goes in verse number seven, before why you should stop judging and start seeing through the eyes of Christ. When we see through the eyes of Christ, then we'll stop judging. But here in verse number 7, this is where it picks up. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. And that's what I ask is. Do what Christ would do. Pray. Amen. When people seem to be out of order, pray for them. Uh, what Jesus would do, pray. He commands us to pray. He, this is an opportunity for us to pray. We got to have the mind of Christ and not automatically just, just down someone because of what you think. 
Don't you know that you can't make nobody do nothing? Especially a grown folk, grown person, you know? Now children, we're supposed to train them, slash make them, you know. <laughs> make them come to church and make them do all these things. But, but with grown people, that's it's something that we don't do. We, we just ask and, and then we just take them to God in prayer. So we ask and it shall be given. The Bible says and seek and ye shall find knock and, and it shall be opened unto you. Because God says that for everyone that asks he says receive it. So if we're going to God for a situation for an individual or whatever the situation, even ourselves. The Bible says if we ask we're going to receive and he that seeketh findeth, he says, and to him that knocketh, the Bible says, it shall be opened. The Bible also says, or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Now when you really think about it, if you just ask a person, we ain't talking about a person that's even saved. But if you ask a person, uh, uh, it says, uh, or what man is there of you whom if he if his son asks bread will he give him a stone none of us will do that to a child if they're asking for food or bread Amen. look at 10 or if he asks uh, a fish will he give him a serpent you know, these are things that are automatically no because even those that are outside even those that are not saved will, will do what's right we would, would, would give their children, we would give them just what they're asking for, especially in uh, their needs. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Yeah. So it says that if we'd only ask, there's another passage saying regarding the Holy Spirit, if we ask, amen, God will give. And what, what, what child asks his father for this or for that and they, and they don't give it to him or give him something what they're not asking for. God will do the same for us. Yeah. And so if the people in our evil know how to do good things for their children, we should do even better for ours. But God said he would do it for us. But we have to go to him. Look at number 12. He says the golden rule. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Take a look at this. Two golden rules of life. The wife is always what? Right. When you feel she is wrong, slap yourself and read rule number one again. <laughs> golden rule for those of us who are married the wife is always right <laughs> so really when it comes to this golden rule when it comes to the to the things of God we got to think about that whatever we that we elect to to do for others we, we, we want to do the same for ourselves we, we know we want the same back we know we want to be treated right so we should treat everybody else right. The Bible goes further than just, just for the wife to be right. The Bible tells us that we got to lay down the mud men, lay down our lives for our wives. As Christ laid down his life for the church. That means that we love our wives. We just don't like them. No, 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 I didn't come out right. No, here's what I'm saying, okay? We got to, we, no, we love our wives. I'm going to stop it now, okay then. All right, then, yeah, the golden rule. <laughs> She's always right, okay? But we got to treat everybody, everybody right. Amen. And that's what this golden rule basically is, is all about. Jesus wraps up and kind of wraps up this whole Sermon on the Mount uh, with, with, with this. And, and, of course, he goes on and begins to tell the, the disciples about the different things that, 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 uh, that, uh, that is to be, but... But when he goes on and, and lets us know about the more specifically this golden rule and how it leans in with this judge not, uh, we got to treat everybody right. That's right. That's right. You see, when I come into church and 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 uh, um, and, and I'm, I'm, let's say that I'm I'm drunk, I'm, I'm what do you call it? Uh, I, I smell like uh, alcohol. 
Uh, whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> What's that? And, and, uh, and I, or I smell like smoke. Or oh, I smell like uh, uh, marijuana. Thank you, sir. Marijuana, <laughs> if anybody know how that smell. You know, and, and all these other things. How are we going to treat that individual? That's right. How are we going to do it? The question is, were we ever in a condition where we, where, where, where we felt as though that, that I should not be going to church to get my life right? We never know what condition a person is in, is in when they come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Right. So all of our so-called, and well, use that word again, prejudices and different things in which our thoughts and, and everything should be tossed out. That's right. And allow God's word to be resident in our hearts and, and everything about us and we should go forward like that. Even in the Word. Amen. Yeah, I was talking to inmates on, on Friday and, and I, I had to share the same, same word with them. And let them know that, brothers, I do apologize. I, 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 I just not, uh, you know, uh, I just told them I just had to apologize. With all their tattoos and, you know, from, from head on down. And all the different things and stuff like that. And I said, uh, we have to set all that stuff aside. People ain't going to be like you. You see, when we grew up, you know, there were things in which we did do and there were things in which we didn't do. There were more things we didn't do than we did. Than what we were allowed, rather. We didn't go to games and, and we didn't do all those things. And we just, I don't know, church. Home, school. So home was no different than church. Because we prayed all the time, it seems like. And, and so the thing is, is that we, we, we can't carve people out like us. So, so we can't put our own, own idea and thoughts on people. People are going to be who they are. Right. And any change that happens, guess what? We can't be the Holy Ghost police now. The Holy Ghost himself have to do appropriate change. That's right. But guess what, y'all? It's got to start with us. Yeah. And I'm here to let you know it has started with me. Yeah. Change. Yeah. And it starts on the inside and, right. and it works its way on the outside. Right. And then things begin to look new. Things have been yeah. looking new to me lately. Because yeah. I set aside a bunch of, whole bunch of junk. Uh. And just begin to just rely totally upon what the Word of God says yes. and not what I think and not what my tradition uh, yes. my experience yes. my intellect yes. but it's about God Amen. and it's about His Word Amen. so that's what this right here thought was about today regarding the sermon that Jesus has Amen. and I challenge you if any of you have these type of issues with people yes. then we are to toss them out yes. cast them out yes. when Jesus casts out demons or he commissioned his, his disciples to cast them out yes. then we should cast out those those thoughts, those ideas and everything else and allow God to use us in a way that's pleasing to him yes. and not to people Does that means that we're going to love one another and we're going to invite everybody and anybody, amen, in the house of the Lord, yes. in the house of prayer. Because evidently, if anyone comes, it's about, amen, prayer unto God and worship unto amen. Him. And it's not about you. It's not about me. But it's about Him, the only true God. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Let me, let, me, let me leave this with you. Amen. Judge not. Don't be so quick to judge. You never know. When you might just find yourself walking in that person's shoes. So we never, we never know. The door to church is open. Let us stand.